Today, we talk about heavenly bourbon, angels and <clears throat> angels and angels and all right, get it, relax. Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight we're going to be talking about one of my most requested bourbons basically ever on this channel. This is the Angel's Envy Kentucky Straight Bourbon Port Wine Finish. Now this was an innovative whiskey, it still is, but this was an innovative whiskey because at the time, at least to my knowledge, nobody else was finishing bourbons. And specifically in port wine, instead of something like sherry, which is way more popular up in Scotland, it was a little surprising to, to read about that. But in August 19th, 2010, Lincoln, Wes, and Kyle Henderson all poured their first whiskey into a port, ruby port barrel, and thus was born Angel's Envy. Now the name Lincoln Henderson might sound familiar to you. If it does, great for you. If it does not, no big deal. He was the master distiller at Brown Foreman for about 40 years, and we owe Gentleman Jack and Woodford freaking Reserve to this guy. So that's pretty awesome. I mean, Woodford Reserve, right? I have recommended that to so many people. It was one of the first bourbons I ever loved, and it's just very meaningful to me, and I'm psyched that that guy made it. So good job, Lincoln. I know that you passed away a few years ago, but I'm still appreciating it. So to your family, Good job. <laughs> anyway, in March of 2011, Angel's Envy re released their first product, which was this. And it's been doing great ever since. It's always got great marks. Even this little tag here says 98 points, right? So this thing is always at the top of the charts. But for a number of years, they've been producing this. After about a year, they started making the cast strength. And that was one that Lincoln always said that he really looked forward to because he was able to kind of be a little bit more choosy and really make something that he absolutely wanted to dial in the flavor of. And I just think that's great. I have not personally tried the cast strength or the rye, which I'll talk about in a sec, but it just, I can't wait to, right? It's, I mean, this is so good. I'm, I'm a big fan already. Anyway, in 2013, they ended up winning Best Whiskey by, I think it was Spirits Magazine for this guy. And they also broke ground on their own distillery. Clearly they knew that they were going somewhere. In 2016, they opened the new distillery and they started making all of their own uh, whiskey. Now, I failed to mention earlier, so obviously with a year's time frame in between pouring that first whiskey into the barrel and releasing their product, that's not enough time to make a Kentucky straight bourbon. So they ended up having to source from other Kentucky distilleries, which no big deal. You know, obviously they took what they knew and then they adjusted it with the Port Ruby, uh, Ruby Port finish. So, you know, no harm, no foul, and now they make their own stuff, so everything is great. Anyway, it was not from MGP, it was from other Kentucky distilleries. So, while I was doing my research, I came across this quote from Wes Henderson that I really liked because I found that it, it kind of, it really exemplified the idea of somebody being both a businessman and somebody who really appreciates the craft. So I just wanna read this to you real quick. Wes says, I think that at the very beginning, I personally wanted to find a port that was a little more on the exotic side or very rare, something with sizzle. At the end of the day, however, from the taste profile standpoint, the ruby port barrels we chose worked for our needs better than any of the others. One of the exciting things about the experimentation is that we were able to try a number of different uh, port barrels and varieties. Now, I love that because if you kind of read between the lines, essentially what he's saying, he wanted something crazy and he probably tasted something crazy, but it wasn't in the volume that they were going to need. So instead he went with the regular you know, ruby port. And that was a good call because again, this is delicious. So speaking of which, let's talk about this whiskey. Now Angel's Envy is clearly a play on the term Angel's Share. Now the Angel's Share, for those that don't know, I am the whiskey dictionary after all, right? Angel's Share is a reference to how much whiskey evaporates out of a barrel every year. Now in some places like Scotland or Ireland, it can be as low as 2% of the, of the volume of the barrel, but in places like India, it can be as high as 12%. So in the case of Angel's Envy, it was only about 5%. So the joke is essentially that they're getting a better deal than the Angels this time, so they're envious. But this it has a mash bill of 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. It is 43.3% ABV. 
and it is actually one of the few that I would say is calling themselves a small batch, but uh, not on the bottle, but they still refer to themselves as a small batch and actually deserve it because their barrels, they're going through about eight to 12 barrels for every batch, which is small enough in my mind to really qualify for that. Now, small batch doesn't really have a formal definition, more of an understood thing. But if you look at something like Knob Creek, they refer to themselves as small batch, but they're doing like a hundred barrels at a time, if not even more. So it's, it varies. But this is typically aged about six years. It is no age statement, but it's between four and six years. They're more trying to match up the flavor profile than they are necessarily a number. Um, additionally, uh, this is finished for three to six months in 59 gallon ruby port uh, barrels. <laughs> Sorry, um, made of French oak and imported from Portugal. All right, so anyway, one last thing I wanna show you before I kinda get into tasting this. So, and I'll do a close up here. On the cork, there is a 10 slash 10. Now, it took me a little bit to even notice this. It's, it says expression 10, 10. What that means is a reference to the date that they were originally supposed to release this. It was supposed to go out in October of 2010. However, Lincoln didn't feel it was ready. So they let it sit for another six months. And I thought that was interesting that they leave it on here, you know, 11 years later at this point, which is very cool. So if you've ever wondered what that's about, that's what it is. All right, let's go ahead and get into the nosing and the tasting of this delicious whiskey. All right, so it's been a little while since I've reviewed not only a whiskey, but a bourbon. And I'm quickly reminded of the fact that most bourbons have a lot of the same notes. So some of those classic bourbon notes are going to be oak, vanilla, caramel, butterscotch, things like that. Now in this specifically, I'm finding vanilla and I am also finding a little bit of oak, little, little barrel. Um, but raisins is high up there for me as well. It's kind of this dried fruit nose that you're getting. Maple syrup, and, and part of that is, at least for me, it must be from the very high corn, right? So it's gonna be very sweet, but mixing with typical bourbon notes and such a high corn content, you're gonna get a sweet kind of maple syrupy smell. Now there was one more thing in here, and you know I've mentioned to you guys before, I take a lot of notes before I do my videos just because I don't want to come on here and kind of bumble through the, the notes. But I usually do end up kind of doing some ad hoc as well. Now this is one that I actually didn't write down, but I'm getting right now, and it took me a second here as part of the reason I'm kind of kind of working through this, right? It it's like it's like dusty peanuts or possibly toasted um, macadamia nuts. I realize those two things smell very different, but it's it's still like a subjective smell thing. So I'm trying to work out between the two. Um, I'm gonna lean towards toasted macadamia nuts because I just think that that's, I think that's what I'm getting. It's reminding me of, I, I literally used to toast macadamia nuts. We went on a trip to Hawaii when I was really, really young <clears throat> and I tried macadamia nut chocolates and I fell in love with the with that specific type of, of uh, macadamia nut and kind of learned how to do a lot of weird things with them, but toasting them is not all that weird, but it does have a very specific aroma to it. And I'm, I'm getting that in here. At least it's reminding me of it. All right, let's go ahead and have a sip of this because it's been a long day. I think it's like 1130 here and I haven't had a sip yet. So cheers guys. Hmm. Ah, my happy place. <laughs> Drinking a good bourbon really is just, it's just a big reason why I do this channel. I mean, I mentioned in my in my year recap thing that I was gonna be drinking only whiskeys that I really was happy about this year. And this is a great way to start. <laughs> so let's talk about what I'm getting out of the taste here. Now there's vanilla. Uh, that's, a, that's kind of an obvious one, right? Uh, leather, which is more fun. You know, you're getting a little bit of, of when I say leather, I hope that you guys know what I mean here. It's it's one of those tastes that is more, you picture what it tastes like based off what it smells like. Picture like in the 80s or probably in the, more the 90s when people would buy those like, I mean, leather jackets are obviously a thing now, but I remember my, my dad used to have this brown leather jacket. And um, thinking back on it, it actually might've even been a faux leather, but I don't think it was. It had a very specific smell to it when he first brought it home. And that smell is what I taste, you know, when I say leather. So I don't know, it's, it's one of those, this is, this is a fun one for me because it's kicking up a lot of little memories. 
right. I'll just shut up and drink. <laughs> All right, next I'm getting maple syrup. So that's cool that it's reflecting from the nose to the mouth. Um, chocolate, which is fun. Milk chocolate specifically, not dark chocolate. Uh, it doesn't have that heavy cacao. It's more, it's more like a creamy chocolate uh, to me. So I'm gonna say milk chocolate. Now, this does drink a little bit like, I mean, obviously you're wondering where the port's coming from, right? So in the finish, specifically for me, is where I detect most of the port notes. It drinks similar to a sweeter red wine. Um, I mean, obviously port, right? But I don't taste port so much as I do just a general sweeter red wine flavor. Now, I am not nearly as versed in wine as I am in whiskey. Um, I have had quite a bit, but not anywhere near this. I mean, this, right? I don't have this with wine. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think that there is, it's not a berry note. What is that? Hmm, give me one more sip. Come with me on this journey of exploration. Hmm. Am I crazy in saying strawberries? I don't think I am. It's not as fresh and crisp as actually biting into a strawberry. It's almost more like, <laughs> it's almost more like, you know what? Actually, I do know what it is. It's almost like that strawberry, like syrupy stuff that they put on like a strawberry cheesecake. That's what I'm tasting um, because of the sweetness here. It's overpowering a little bit with the strawberry. And, and making it so it doesn't, it's not just like biting into a fresh strawberry. It's, it's like, a, like a syrupy strawberry. I like that. Yeah, I'm sticking with that for sure. I like that. Um, definitely didn't have that in my notes. So interesting. Very cool. All right. Let's go ahead and talk overall with this whiskey. Now, it's no surprise I like this whiskey, right? But let's talk about what it means for you. So this is a $50 whiskey. About $53, I think, is what I paid for it, and you'll probably find it between $50 and $55. Let me tell you a, a quick little story. And I promise I'll keep it quick, but this is a little little insight into, into Bill the Bachelor, um, sort of. <laughs> so at my bachelor party, I, I had a blast, and I've, I've told the stories about my bachelor party a few times on my live streams, but I had such an awesome time at my bachelor party, and, and my brother-in-law told all of my friends to bring a bottle of whiskey with them. That was going to be kind of like, like a present for the, the, the groom, right? So a lot of them did. Actually, all of them did. One of my friends brought a bo bottle of rum, which I actually really liked too. Um, but my friend John brought this bottle for me. And it was at the time, actually, I believe it was at the time my, my most expensive bourbon I had ever had at $50. <laughs> so I, it was a big deal for me. And I had it, and it was absolutely amazing. And... I just kind of will always associate this bottle with my bachelor party and um, specifically eating steak with a giant Bowie knife, a uh, ribeye, delicious ribeye uh, with a giant Bowie knife, which I will put a picture of right here. Um, <laughs> but in general, this was just a really good thing and I have great memories about this. So as I said, I enjoy this whiskey because it's nostalgic, because I like the taste and because I think the price is fair. As far as you go, you don't have Bowie knife ribeye bill right? Your, is this worth my $50? Is this a good enough bourbon? My question for you would be, do you like finished scotches? Do you like finished whiskeys? Do you like red wine? Do you like sweet bourbons? If the answer to really any of those is yes, then I think this is a good one for you. The price point for this is beyond fair, as far as I'm concerned. I'm happy that it's not $60. I do actually think I would start questioning it a little bit more at 60 um, in my area. You know, your mileage may vary. But for $50, I think this is absolutely perfect. So very much a buy it for me. So anyway, um, that's it. That's that's my, my verdict here. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. And but be sure to check out the links in the description below. Um, Patreon, you know, subscribe, like, comment, all those things. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and have a great rest of your night. Cheers. <laughs>